In this series, The World's Most Dangerous Snakes, I expand on an idea first introduced by wildlife presenter Nigel Marvin as I count down what I believe to be the 10 most dangerous snakes in the world. We look at four rating factors. Number one, venom toxicity. Two, proximity to people. Three, personality. And four, a special category known as the X Factor. Each snake is given a score out of 10 for each category. The scores are then combined to reach a total out of 40 and the snakes are rated based on that overall score. Hi guys, Dingo here, and welcome to our next episode on the world's most dangerous snakes. It's a series I've really come to love, and today I'm as excited as a woodpecker and antique shop. It's time for the infamous Russell's Viper. And this is a snake species I've respected all of my life. It's an absolutely beautiful specimen of a Russell's. A lot of them aren't this pretty. And even though it's pretty chilled out right now on a hook, she can get pretty grumpy and pretty quickly. She's a beautiful female, about a two and a half, three year old female. Isn't she incredible? Let me put her down on the ground here. Let me get a little bit more comfy with her. And they're magnificent snakes found throughout Southeast Asia. So they're one of the big killers in places like India, Sri Lanka, and their coloration changes according to their locality. But there's something that's always the same with the Russell's Viper. They've got a massive nostril right on the end of their nose. I don't know why they've got it. All the better to smell you with. No, no, not with Russell's Vipers. They don't smell with their nostrils, they smell with their tongue. Tongue flickers out, smell, smell, brings it back. And that's how they tell what they're doing. And right now, it's in a chilled out mood. It's just cruising around. When that tongue's flickering, it's exploring. Just don't want it turning on me now. It's exploring, cruising around. Oh, what's that smell? Nice smell? Is that a rodent? Is that a lizard? It's just cruising around. And you can see the beautiful coloration. Now, where they come from in their local range, in their home ranges, they exceptionally well camouflage, really well. You'll be walking around, even just looking at its personality changing a little bit there. I liked it when that tongue was flicking and when it was exploring and now it's just sitting still for a bit. That's where you just have to learn to read the individual animal. And they're quick strikers, so I have to be very careful. That's why I'm not touching it now. When it moves forward, then I can touch it again. But as I was saying, this beautiful pattern is so camouflaged. Even the white around these circles here. In the bush, you're never gonna see them. And that's why they're such dangerous snakes. So let's get straight into our categories of why I put the Russell's Viper in my top 10 most dangerous snakes in the world. Firstly, we're looking at venom toxicity. Now, as a rule of, of thumb, and in general, vipers are not your most toxic snakes in the world. Your elapids are. So we're talking cobras, mambas, crates, uh, tarpans for my Aussie viewers out there. Those snakes kill people a lot quicker than all of your vipers put together, actually. The neurotoxic venom from those snakes are the, is the venom that kills people really, really quickly. These snakes and the vipers generally don't do that. However, when it comes to the Russell's viper venom, they've got a nasty venom. I mean, it reminds me of when I was a 18 year old, went to my first dance, you know, I was all confused. I was a hot mess. I had on white, white uh, tackies. I had on black jeans. I had on a red checkered shirt. I looked like my mate, a Scottish guy. And then I had a denim jacket on top and I tucked in my shirt. I don't know what I was doing. I might not have been 18, I might have been 13, but I'm just putting it out there. And I went to my first dance, just a hot mess. And that's what the venom of these snakes is like. It's just a whole combination. It would be a help if the cameraman wasn't laughing right now, but it's a whole combination of factors in their venom. So you've got hematoxins breaking down your blood. You've got cytotoxins, which are break, breaking down your tissues. And then they've got a whole bunch of other things that causes things like kidney failure. In one bite example, someone needed dialysis to sort out their kidneys because they went into renal failure, failure from the snake. So it's a really difficult snake to treat the venom. It, it gets inside of you. It'll take a good couple of hours, maybe even days to kill you. So that's not the problem, that takes time, but it's a hard one for doctors to treat. So a puff adder, very cytotoxic. You treat it, you know what's gonna happen. Russell's Viper and different people seem to do different things. Also, because they're so widespread throughout Southeast Asia, 
different localities had seemed to have different properties of their venom. So a doctor gets a patient in, he's been bitten by a viper, a brown viper, that's what he'll say. There's lots of swelling, there's bleeding out of the wound. Then kidneys start having problems. Some people have had heart attacks because of the venom from the snake. It's a real lucky packet. Doctors don't always know how to treat it, especially in rural Asia. And it kills a lot of people there. So when it comes to venom toxicity for the Russell's Viper, I normally keep the toxicity for most of the Vipers down to about a six. I'm pushing the Russell's Viper. Whoa, you just calm down. You calm down, you pretty girl. I'm pushing the Ru Russell's Viper rating to a massive seven out of 10, which is really high for a Viper species. Which brings us to our second category, and that's the proximity to people. How often does a Russell's Viper come into contact with human beings? Well, let me tell you a frightening factor. In Asia, the Russell's Viper claims more human fatalities than any other snake on the planet. That's right. This snake here kills more people in Asia than any other. And for a lot of reasons, obviously, Asia, the most populated continent in the world, and there's a lot of people living in rural parts where this snake is prolific. It comes into contact in people's homes often. It'll come in chasing little rats and mice. They come in after the grain and the food. You'll find them in tea plantations. You'll find them in sugarcane plantations. You'll find them all over that place. And because they're so camouflaged, people come out, particularly at night as well, they'll step on the snake and it'll bite them every single time. So proximity to humans, this snake, all over the place. So many people are coming into contact with it that it claims more fatalities than any other snake in Asia. And there's some big ones on our list from Asia. This snake kills more people than any other. It's also found throughout most of Southeast Asia. So it's got a huge distribution. Um, a lot of people coming across the snake. So when it comes to proximity to people, I'm gonna give the Russell's Viper a massive nine out of 10. which brings us onto our third category, and that's the personality of the snake. Now this snake in particular, I've got a couple of Russell's Vipers, and I've actually been quite surprised how relaxed these snakes are. They are incredibly dangerous when they're in feeding mode. Such a super quick strike, Foo, right out there. But honestly, they're not the most aggressive snakes in the world. Look at it, I'm touching it here. It's not puffing at me, hasn't tried to strike once. Other snakes, even things like puff adders, further down on the list, repeatedly strike at you. This snake's more inquisitive. You'll get defensive. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab a glove here quickly. I want to show you, that even with the glove, look at that. Snake's still chilled out. If I stand on it, I'm trying to replicate someone standing on the snake. I'm pushing fairly firmly. You can see the whole snake moves when I touch it. Still reluctant to bite. Come over here, moves away from me. And that's a in really interesting fact about the Russell's Viper. Now, obviously you get individual species. So there are some Russell's Vipers. Whew, they're nuttier than squirrels turd. Just absolutely epic snakes. Want to bite you all the time. But mostly these snakes, fairly calm and relaxed. I mean, I'm pushing my luck with this snake now. Still no bite. Look at that. Moves away, moves away. So when it comes to the personality of the snake, I'm only going to give this snake a big seven out of 10. Which brings us to our final category, and that's the X Factor. The X Factor is a category where I give certain snakes extra points for characteristics that don't fit into our first three categories. And in the case of the Russell's Viper, unfortunately, this is where it loses some ground on some of our other snakes. It's not a particularly big snake compared to your mambas, cobras, things like that. It's a small snake. It's not particularly aggressive. It's not particularly fast. It's got a quick strike, so I give it some points for that. So the only reason I rate the, the Russell's Viper high in the X Factor is because it kills more people in Asia than any other snake. So when it comes to the X Factor, I'm giving the Russell's Viper a seven out of 10. Which brings its total score to 30 out of 40. And it's our first snake that makes it into the 30s and makes it number six on my list of the world's most dangerous snakes. 
thanks for joining us. Give us your comments below. I know some people, particularly from India, are going to be really disappointed that the Russell's Viper hasn't cracked the top five or even the top one. But when I'm looking at all the factors, it loses some ground on some of the other factors. So join us next time. Let us know what you think. Dingo out.